Hello. This video is a uh, kind of a long time coming. Apologies to everyone who I promised this video to a while back. It's it's just been kind of a crazy few weeks, months, so the time's just kind of melted together. But anyway, finally here it is. This is the video that kind of talks a little bit about the very rough methodology and again methodology is kind of a um uh over overstatement of what this is how but basically how i create estimations for nutrient profiles based off of uh pmr blend labels um so moving right along just a couple of disclosures about this video so that you know uh, what it is and what it's not exactly so I'm going to be using Pet Diet Designer to kind of show this demo. However, uh, the principles can be applied using chronometer or pen and paper. However you like to do your nutrient profile um, mapping, creating your recipes, all that, all that stuff. So um, the next point is that, so again, this method is, I, I use methodology very roughly. This method cannot guarantee an exact nutritional uh, makeup or recipe. All I'm doing here is uh, getting close enough to what we can kind of speculate the nutrient profile is when we're using these unregulated pre-made blends that are not guaranteed to be AFCO or NRC standards. Specifically, in this case, we're looking at prey model raw blends. A lot of them come from co-ops, etc. We don't really know a whole lot about... Um, maybe what the actual nutrient profiles are if we're trying to hit you know a specific set of nutrient standards um last point i'm not a professional nutritionist in either the human or canine aspect and so cannot offer professional guidance with regard to recipe analysis or formulation um, i'm always happy to accept um, private messages if uh, if you've got questions or you can you can tag me and stuff and on raw fed and nerdy etc if you have questions about this or any of the other videos i've uploaded or any of the other spreadsheets or papers that i've done i'm always happy to answer those questions but i'm not i'm not in the business of doing um recipe analysis or formulation so moving right along so just starting right off the bat what i'm using here is a a pre-model raw blend that I actually had bought at one point in time a freezer full of it because I bought like 60 pounds of it or something ridiculous it's got a good good price for it and then I start jumping into this NRC analysis and I'm like oh crap what a, what have I gotten myself into all the stuff I have in my freezer is not not gonna work or I don't know what's in it and I don't know how to figure out what's in it so kind of stumbled upon this kind of method by just messing around in pet diet designer a little bit to see what I could come up with so that I could maybe use these this pre-made blend in some of my recipes at least I certainly don't use it every day because um, you know I've kind of gotten a, a good system down a little in a little better manner but so this is an actual pre-model raw blend that I've used before. I just pulled the label from it. I'm not going to disclose name or manufacturer or anything like that. If you're really interested because you think maybe you're using this one, you PM me, all that. I just don't. I'm not here to blast companies on, on the internet. I'm just here to uh, share this method. So anyway, moving right along. So we can kind of do this method if we have this sort of makeup of a label here and this is actually kind of a this label has kind of a lot compared to other labels I've seen um, even if the label doesn't have this much you can usually try to work with it you just might you know be a little further off base so important parts are the ingredient list um, so we've got chicken frames liver hearts and then beef muscle heart liver and tripe so all ingredients that I've know have worked with have found ways to enter into pet diet designer as their own foods using you know the raw meaty bone uh, numbers that you know savannah put together and we've gotten those out of out of a variety of books etc um, next thing is is that it does lay out right here that we've got these approximate ratios we're looking at 80 percent muscle meat 10 percent organ 
10% bone. So uh, nothing shocking different here. We're just working with the, with the regular old prey model raw ratio model that we've all seen a million and a half times. So, um, and again, this methodology, all, all we have here is liver, so that's going to make up our 10%. You could maybe, if you've got you know liver and kidney and you're following 80 and 5.5, you could apply this methodology in that sense, whatever. The next part is, so some, so this is kind of sometimes what these prey model raw blends are lacking, especially if they're from pretty small companies or kind of, you know, uh, garage sort of kitchen setups, whatever, they don't have the guaranteed analysis, you know, they don't send their foods in for analysis, whatnot. So this you may or may not have. I, for me, this is kind of an important part. It, it gives me at least a, a rough value. The first thing that I look at here is calorie content. So what we're looking at is, you know, 1,370 calories per kilogram. I reduce everything down to 100 grams. So we're looking at 137 calories per 100 grams. So that is a number that I'm going to be trying to get close to. I'll go ahead and let you know right now that I usually don't hit it right on the money. It's it's usually somewhere around there. You know, I try and stay within 20 calories in either direction. Um, just that's kind of a margin of error that I feel comfortable working with. Uh, you might You might find that you're able to get closer to the actual true calorie count. Um, and that's great. So the other things here, just kind of bonus values to work with, or just to keep in mind are these max and min values. And, and that's kind of an important distinction here is that we're looking at maximums for stuff and minimums for stuff. So when I'm kind of piecing together this analysis, I am being cognizant of the fact that I want to be above the minimum value. So in this case, I'd want to be, you know, at least 17.09% protein in my recipe or somewhere above there. And that, that way I know that I'm actually conforming to what they have in their analysis. Same thing with like moisture. I'm not going to, uh, I don't want to exceed 74.19% moisture. So for example, if I'm putting together the recipe, trying to see if, if I'm putting together this ingredient list and trying to figure out, um, what the, portions of each ingredient are and I end up with 79% moisture, I'm going to go ahead and assume that I'm, I'm a little off base here. I want to be below that max value. So I'll adjust things so that that doesn't happen. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. And, and if it doesn't right now, that's fine. We're, I'm actually going to show you in action how it works. So where to start? Um, the first thing I like to start with is the raw meaty bones because that is kind of always the biggest headache when you're working with uh, these raw recipes that include bone and so hopefully whatever prey model raw blend you have is using raw meaty bones that can be found in the raw fed and nerdy album um, if you haven't checked that album out yet you definitely should it's in the raw fed and nerdy group and Savannah put it together. It's basically, it's, it's a whole compilation of the, uh, of nutrient values of, of a variety of raw meaty bones. And so I pretty sure I'm using those values for chicken frames. If not, I'm using values that I pulled from a book a while back and put together. So that's, uh, cause I, I put these chicken frames in values of a while back. But anyway, I'm pretty sure I got them out of the album. For the most part, you can trust the album and I would definitely recommend using that for um, entering bone values into Pet Diet Designer, Chronometer, wherever you're entering. Okay, so yeah, first things first, get that squared away. If you're using chicken frames and you don't have chicken frames as a food in Pet Diet Designer, do that. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Um, that could be a, a different video. Again, look in the album. It's all laid out there. Second thing, add the ingredient list into a new recipe. So you can see over here, this is just a screen catch. I added in all the things I did speculate, the ground beef, and I end up changing that. But I just add in all of the um, ingredients that I have. So, you know, there's my chicken frames, there's my green tripe, 
um, and then the rest of these came from USDA database. So threw those in there, haven't messed with them yet. So the next part is to start playing with the numbers. And I've kind of outlined here that one hit two approximate conditions. First is to get as close as possible to the nutrient analysis on the page before. So this guy over here, here, um, specifically this, this guy and stay above your maxes and mins. So yeah, so specifically get close to calories and stay below max values and above min values. And the second thing is to get as close to the PMR ratio if that's the type of blend you're working with. So get as close to the ratio that has been outlined for you. So in this case, I want to be, and again, this says approximate, so I'm not trusting this manufacturer necessarily to be at, you know, perfectly 80%, 10, 10, but since that's what they said here, I'm going to get as close to those as possible. Um, to make my life easier, I actually end up right exactly doing 80, 10, 10. So the next part, so the first thing I want to do is, as I said, we're going to, we're going to take care of the bone stuff right away because bones seem to be a, one of the biggest headaches for people. So that's, that's the first thing I'm going to do. So chicken frame, primary source of bone. I'm going to use an estimate for chicken frames at 45% bone. And I have that in my notes. I don't remember where I grabbed that from. Hopefully whatever raw meaty bones you're using, you've got that kind of estimated percentage, um, of like how much is actually bone in that cut and how much is meat. So just some simple math there. If we have a hundred grams of chicken frames, we've got 45 grams of bone and 55 grams of muscle meat. So it then follows if we want to, um, do the, the PMR 10% bone thing. Uh, we want bone to be 10 grams by weight in our hundred gram recipe. And so at this point, I, you know, you can set up an algebraic equation for this if you want. Um, or, you know, you just kind of run a guess and check. Uh, sometimes I do that. Sometimes that's just quicker. Anyway, you know, working with guess and check at the end of the day, if I then figure out, okay, if I have 22 grams of chicken frame in our recipe, 45% of that is going to be bone. 45% of 22 is just about 10 grams. So I think it's 9.9. .9. So I'm going to go ahead and say that we've satisfied that condition if we're using 22 grams of chicken frames. So bone solved because that is the only bone in this recipe, thankfully. So if you've got other bone, you know, you might want to you're going to need to do a little more mixing and matching in the, in the play around with stuff category um, of this method. But in this case, it was just a very easy example. So chicken frames. So 22 grams of chicken frames. So now we're going to do the muscle meat. So 22 grams of chicken frames. We already figured out is 10 grams of bones. So that leaves over 12 grams of meat. So this is contributing to our 80% muscle meat category. So what does this mean? It means we have in a hundred gram recipe, we have 68 grams left, um, to account for using the rest of the ingredients from the list that would be categorized as muscle meat by PMR standards. So that's going to be our beef and the beef heart and tripe and chicken heart. So since this is going to be the majority of the recipe, I'm going to go ahead and classify this as the area where you're going to play around the most to try and, you know, hit those, uh, guaranteed analysis values that we were looking at. So you want to, you know, use these to adjust where your protein, fat, moisture are, as well as calories. And I'm just going to start easy. I'm going to take 68 divided by four, and that's going to give me 17 grams. So you know, when I'm in pet dye designer, I've got 22 grams of chicken frame, 17 grams of beef, uh, ground beef, beef heart, tripe, and chicken heart. Okay. Last one for, you know, just starting out is the, is the organ meat. So we know 80, 10, 10, 10 percent is going to be organ meat. We've got two organs here. We've got chicken liver, beef liver. I'm not going to do anything crazy with this. I'm just going to split it right down the middle, say I've got five grams chicken liver, five grams beef liver, and a hundred grams of this blend. Okay. So now, um, brings us to the pet diet designer portion. 
of our video. And so, as you can see here, I just set up this recipe exactly how I described before. We've got 22 grams of chicken frame, 17 grams of all the different, you know, muscle meats, and five grams each of the uh, organs. So, you know, I already kind of have a note here on what I ended up with. So, what I do in here basically is is I'll start changing stuff. So let's look at the first thing up here is this, um, the calories in this recipe is 165. If you remember from before, we're aiming for 137. This is outside of that margin of error that I like to work in. I like to work within 20 calories. Um, I'm also gonna note here that, you know, we're looking at a higher percentage of fat, I think, than what I would necessarily want to be at for this recipe and then protein is close so you know we're, we're, we're well above the fat minimum and again technically we're above the minimum so it's okay but I'm gonna go ahead and assume that you know you're not gonna be having quite so much tripe you're contributing a lot of fat there so let's take that down to 10 so now what does that do that means that I've removed seven grams on my hundred gram recipe and seven grams of muscle meat. So I need to distribute those properly. So I could say, you know, I could say three here and three here and one here, for example, and that's still gonna add up to 100 grams. What do we have now? Okay, we're 158, we're getting closer. We're almost at that 20 or 20 calorie margin of error. We're, um, the fat's looking a little lower, moisture still looks good, all of that stuff. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll keep on messing around with this. Um, and again, this is totally up to your experimentation. Um, hopefully just the main point that you understand here is that we want these little categories to add up to those ratio values. So we want these, these guys, um, plus the, the 12 grams from the chicken frames to add up to 80 because, you know, that's our muscle meat ratio. So I'll just kind of show you what I ended up with after just a little bit of experimentation. Just threw all these in here. We've got a little bit of tripe because we, you know, low fat. And let's see, 25 grams there. Because we're going to assume, you know, there's probably going to be a lot more beef muscle meat in there than there's going to be like, you know, heart and stuff like that. Again, these are assumptions. I'm not, I'm not privy to their exact recipes and so that's why this is all speculation and estimation just to kind of get close to what we're looking for what's our calories at 152.67 um, that seemed to be the lowest I could get using these ratios you know if you start um, going outside of the ratios you're gonna maybe be able to lower that a little bit so it's totally up to you how you want to do this. If you're able to get this down lower, awesome. Or closer to the calories, awesome. You know, it's, for me, I'm not going to, I didn't devote that much time into doing this. All, all I'm trying to do is get a rough estimation of how this works for me. So this is what I ended up with following those rules. So um, just the last thing that you would do now is, uh, create a new food item for this blend. So this is kind of specifically, you know, I'm going to show you specifically Pet Diet Designer because that's what I'm comfortable working with. That's what I work with the most. This seems to be the fastest. So uh, just basic instructions here. Export the nutrient analysis for the 100 grams of the PMR blend recipe you just created. Open Food Wizard. Copy the values from the recipe analysis into food wizard for the new food as per 100 grams so i'll just give you a quick little look at what that might look like so i've already got report viewer pulled up here um just gonna hit submit okay we're let's see where we're at here all this stuff you know oh the one one other thing is we did get some um estimated let's go back here uh some Things in the analysis for calcium phosphorus, we're looking at minimums here. With chicken frames, you know, it's, you know, this is, this might seem a lot higher than the mins. It definitely is, so it would be, it would be crazy to have, I feel like it'd be crazy to be as low as 
10% uh, calcium, and, or I'm sorry, not 10%, 0.1% calcium and 0.17% phosphorus like those those values are pretty low so again these are much higher they they categorize as, as fulfilling the, the need to be um, higher than the minimum so that's just a just a note there um, you've got your ingredient list all that stuff so okay I don't know if you've never exported out of pet dye designer before it's just this little button up here it's export PDF file. Voila. We'll see, we'll just read. Yeah, we'll just overwrite test. Yeah. Okay, now I've got this this guy. So with that in mind, then you go back over here to Pet Dye Designer Food Wizard. And we're gonna say uh, per 100 grams, because that's what this recipe is, just in case you didn't notice, it's 100 gram recipe weight. And then just start, you know, okay, test PMR or whatever. Um, filling these guys out from the reports. I'm not going to show you that. I already did it. So, and then I've got this test recipe here that I'm going to just show you kind of using my, uh, my, my new food item. I think I, okay, yeah. So, test PMR blend, throw it in there. Um, you can see what we've got per 100 grams. It should be, gosh, I think it should be the same. Or no, sorry, I did a slightly different uh, thing for this one. But yeah, I copied this one from the original values. But anyway, so you, you should see what we've got in here. And, you know, then you say, let's up it to 600 grams. Okay, we're close to what I would actually feed my dog, which is about 1,000 calories in a day go through here what are we looking at this is kind of where you know when i wrote that little report about okay where do these pmr blends lack yeah i can't promise you 100 percent that you know magnesium is only fulfilling 77.71 percent but i can say with pretty good um you know accuracy that we have a pretty good chance of being low on magnesium and potassium and these are probably just fat fingered values honestly I don't think sodium and chloride were actually that low um, but selenium vitamin D vitamin E for sure these things we can pretty much guarantee are gonna be low in these blends so but having this helps you plan a little bit even this one we're, we're seeing some poor calcium phosphorus I mean we're technically in the green, but we're not looking at that ideal calcium to phosphorus uh, ratio. So, you know, those things in mind, that's kind of what's useful about being able to do this. If you are at this point reliant on PMR blends to some extent, you know, you just have a ton in your freezer or you like buying them or you feel like they're a good jumping off point. Awesome. You know, this kind of will help you maybe start to bridge that gap between what PMR blends can give you and um, what the NRC values you're trying to hit are or AFCA or, or you know, the UK standards, anything, anything standard based that you're looking for. So I really hope this was helpful and, um, no, it's a little long winded. Apologies for that. But at the end of the day, if you got any questions, anything like that, feel free to just uh, private message me and have a good one.